We all know that having above average watch time metrics are really critical to YouTube's success. However, there are some additional video metrics that you can't measure or thus improve through YouTube analytics. It's like it's YouTube's dirty little secret and that is what's coming up next. Brian G. Johnson. Hey, it's me, Brian G. Welcome to the video and helping you to stake your claim, amplify your message. Get started doing just that by subscribing and click the bell notification so you don't miss anything. There are some additional video metrics that are critical to our growth and I set up an experiment to really dive in to understand what makes the algorithm tick and these are my findings. <laughs> Now, in order to really understand what's going on, I created a case study with two particular videos and I wanted to see what would happen if I promoted and really pushed one video on social media, driving a lot more views to the particular video. Now, success would be measured by which video would drive the most views in the first 72 hours after the video's release. By the way, this is known as view velocity or it's very similar to view velocity. And speaking of view velocity, now Matt Geelan, considered an expert at YouTube SEO, wrote an article on TubeFilter and it said this about view velocity. We found that the average life to date viewership of a video increased exponentially as the percentage of subscribers who watched the video in the first 48 hours increased. Videos that drive more views in the first few days of release tend to do better. In fact, the article goes on and says this. As a result of seeing this, we dug a bit deeper and found with nearly 92% accuracy, we could predict whether a video would perform well for us based on its view velocity. Now, as mentioned, my experiment would focus on driving views in the first 72 hours of the video's release. And I would increase views to one of those videos by promoting it across Facebook. And I did this by asking peers, influencers, and friends to share a specific video that I would publish the following day. By the way, this was a very successful experiment and resulted in a tremendous amount of shares and ultimately views of my video. Now I should mention that this promotion on Facebook also triggered another video metric that YouTube and the algorithm absolutely measure. It's called session starts. And session start is when you send viewers to YouTube in your specific video. So in my case, I was sending viewers from Facebook over to YouTube. And thus, I started a new YouTube session. So this particular video that I was gonna promote on Facebook. We'll call that video A. And my question for you is how many views do you think I was able to drive when I promoted across Facebook and I also emailed my list. More details about the list in just a bit. Now, as mentioned, dozens and dozens of people shared my status update, which was a link to my video. And I actually drove 984 views to that particular video. So I really increased the views to the video and it's pretty darn interesting what happens next. Now, how did I know how many exact views I drove? Well, with every video I promote, I use Google URL Shortener, which is a free service. I'll link to it down below in the description and it allows me, number one, to shorten up the URL and number two, to track clicks to each link I create which is ultimately a click to the link is a view on YouTube. As mentioned, I track clicks to every video I promote and typically I drive anywhere between 150 and 250 views to the videos I promote by leveraging Facebook as well as my mailing list. Now, as you can see from this image, this social experiment really worked well and I increased my views by more than three times driving a total of 984 views to my video. Now, let me tell you a little bit about video B, the title of which was New YouTube Algorithm 2018. And I proceeded to promote the video like I always do. I mailed my list, I shared the video on Facebook, but I didn't really engage a lot of people. I didn't ask for additional support. And this particular video drove a total of 286 views 
in the first few days of its release. Now, when it comes to my mailing list, I drive anywhere between 150 to 200 views with my own list. But you know what we haven't talked about yet? We haven't talked about YouTube promotion. That is, how many views did YouTube send to video A as well as video B with uh, traffic sources like YouTube search and browse and suggested videos and <laughs> This is where things get really interesting. And hang on, because here we go. In the first 72 hours of its release, YouTube traffic sources for video B accounted for 1,553 views. And remember, for the same traffic sources, YouTube only sent 703 views for video A. Wow, we're talking twice the amount of views. Why? I believe the answer lies in a white paper that was released by a Google engineer entitled Deep Neural Network for YouTube Suggestions. And I wanna draw your attention to this statement. As an example, consider user past history with the channel that uploaded the video being scored. How many videos has the user watched from the channel? When was the last time the user watched a video from the channel? We're really talking about individual viewer history and a channel that they visit often and the topics that they're interested in. And this is the second metric I wanna draw your attention to, user history, also known as browse history. Now in your YouTube analytics, you can track and measure the browse traffic source, but that's about it. They really don't provide additional details on how you can improve. In this video, I will. You can do this on a mobile device or on your desktop computer. For example, on mobile, you can go ahead and pull up analytics discovery, traffic sources, and then browse. And you can see in this image that browse has accounted for 17.8% of my views over the last 28 days. Now, by the way, this app has recently been updated. And as you're using the app, notice you'll sometimes see how can I act on this? It's located at the bottom of your screen. I pulled that up for the browse traffic source and it says browse feature includes traffic from homepage home screen, subscription feed, and other browsing, browsing features. At the end of the day, the vast majority of browse traffic comes from the YouTube homepage. I find it so amazing how YouTube really configures each account for each specific user based on their viewing history. For example, right now I'm looking at my account and I see Casey Neistat is featured at the top followed by Peter McKinnon. And then there's some gaming channels featured for the game Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. That's something I'm interested in. And there's our boy Roberto Blake. Awesome. Now check out what happens when I log in to another account. I'll log in to the Morning Fame account and let's take a look at the homepage. I go to Switch Account, Morning Fame. Now what you'll notice about the homepage for the Morning Fame account is that many of the videos that are featured at the top of the channel are based on relaxing music because the user, that's Nico, who codes the Morning Fame website, as he's coding, he listens to hip hop, trance, kind of crazy German music I'm not sure about, but definitely YouTube is configuring his channel homepage very differently than my channel homepage. Why? Browse. But this really hasn't answered the question, why is it that video B that had much less promotion, why did it do so much better than video A? Why was it that YouTube pushed out video B to so many users? I believe the answer is because in 2017, some of my most successful videos were videos based on, you guessed it, the YouTube algorithm. The same or very similar title to that of video B. In fact, if you look at this screenshot here, which is a screen capture from YouTube Analytics and subscriber sources, you can see that some of the most successful videos of mine 
during the middle of 2017 really focused around the YouTube algorithm. Now to be clear, it's not just that I published videos in the past about the algorithm because that's not enough. These algorithm videos also had very positive video metrics associated with them. And it's these very metrics that allow YouTube to make decisions based on which videos get promoted out across the site and which ones do not. For example, check out this image from the YouTube creators website and check out this statement that's been highlighted. In videos with consistently high audience retention in watch time have the potential to show up more frequently in search and suggested locations on YouTube. And that is a positive or above average video metric that YouTube measures, relative audience retention and watch time. Now this really got me thinking, what other metric is the algorithm measuring to really identify if viewers like a particular video? Well, one would be the view to subscriber ratio. Are viewers subscribing to a video when watching? If not, that sends a message to YouTube that there aren't a whole lot of people that really love this video. Now another metric, of course, would be audience retention, very powerful really communicates just how much someone likes the video. And another watch time metrics would be accumulated minutes watched. As a video gains more minutes, it becomes more powerful and it's clear that people generally like the video. And view velocity, as mentioned, is an important metric that we wanna strive to improve. And lastly is YouTube session starts. Make no mistake, YouTube is measuring all these things and it's our job as video creators to improve improve on these metrics to grow our channels. You know, there's a saying and it goes, that which is not measured cannot be improved. And that's why I so love the Morning Fame website. That's why I contacted the owner about becoming a partner. Morning Fame makes it really easy for YouTubers to identify what's working, what's not, and so on. For example, in this image, you can see you can easily measure view velocity across every one of your videos that you publish. And this is the Morning Fame workshop tab. Super powerful because it breaks down these various video metrics that are very important, like watch time, gain subscribers, views, and more. By the way, you can check out Morning Fame. I've got a link in the description. Give it a test run for 30 days, won't cost you a dime. Super powerful tool that I think you're gonna love. So what's the big takeaway? How can we move forward and really improve and grow our channels? We can improve our channels by focusing on all these metrics, audience retention, watch time, by paying attention to keywords and really striving to improve all these elements as we publish new videos to our channel. Time and time again, when I publish new videos that have above average audience retention, that have above average watch time metrics, when an audience starts really digging into a particular video, then time and time again, YouTube has promoted it out. Here's another bonus tip for you. Bonus! I use real-time analytics inside of YouTube to identify what's working and to ultimately grow my channel. Check out that video, it's in the YouTube card right now. It'll help you to do the same and grow on YouTube in 2018 and beyond. You know, here on this channel, it's all about staking your claim. It's about deciding it shall be, not wanting or wondering, but deciding that you're gonna grow a channel, that you're gonna make money online, that you're ultimately gonna succeed. And, and we do that by amplifying our message you can begin that process right now by clicking on the yellow B to the G icon below. You'll subscribe and I'll continue to share the strategies and tactics that have allowed me to grow and you'll feed a poodle. I got two and they're hungry. I'll see you next time.